Lord have mercy, it's always something, but we are live somewhere in the Seattle area at home, my parents' home, my home for, I don't know, my entire life, pretty much. And we're gonna make a, a great cocktail today. I'm very excited about that. We're gonna make essentially what is a gin sour, but it is a gin gimlet with cucumber. I thought, you know what, my mom's got like the cucumbers going off in the garden and it's going to be a nice refreshing uh, spa-like cocktail for uh, another hot summer day. I know that Labor Day weekend is the unofficial end of summer, but we're still getting some warm weather. So that's what we're gonna do. And so we're going to use uh, just three simple ingredients plus the cucumbers, which is what I love about this cocktail. And so many pre-prohibition cocktails, in fact, or even prohibition cocktails, um, we're gonna use a bottle of Citadel, not the whole bottle, of course, but we're gonna use Citadel. It is a French gin, not necessarily known for their gin, but with this gin, they just might get there. Um, of course, uh, you know, things like brandy, otherwise known as, um, what is it known as in French? Uh, I'm forgetting. Uh, I haven't had enough drinks, obviously. But uh, gin, wine, they're all about it. Um, and we're going to make this crafty little cocktail today. I'm gonna get some of this out of my way because I'm also going to use these glasses from my parents' uh, wedding registry, essentially. 60 years plus and going strong, depending on the day. But um, we're going to use a cucumber from my mom's garden. Way to go, mom. And we're going to, first off, just muddle like three slices of cucumber and the simple syrup, which I made this morning. Easy to do. One part water, one part, um, what is it? Uh, one part sugar. And then you just melt it over a hot flame, burn it down and reduce it till it's all clear and then take it off the burner and let it cool and then put it in the fridge, which is exactly what I forgot to get out of the fridge. That and the fresh squeezed lime juice. Okay, here we go. All right, simple syrup, lime juice. We've got the gym, every, gin, everything is ready to go. Um, and I also wanted to show off this book that my dad gave me. It's like an original copy, 1965. They first started printing Old Mr. Boston's official bartender's guide in 1935, and they had at least one printing a year for many, many years. Sometimes there were several printings in a year. Sometimes there were um, none, probably because of either, oh, I don't know, um, a world war that was happening, et cetera, et cetera. So, okay, so what do we need? We need three cucumber slices. And I thought about doing some ribbons, cucumber ribbons for the garnish, but I don't have any. Um, I don't have any proper, uh, what would that be called? Like cocktail picks or whatever. Okay, so we just need a half ounce of simple syrup. And so I've got this interesting little measuring cup and we've got the cucumber in there. And because I don't have a proper muddler, I'm gonna use a big old spoon. The likes of which my mother and father used to chase us around with, probably and most definitely. So, okay, I'm just gonna muddle this a little bit. And I'm going to double strain this because I don't want the seeds. I don't want a chunky drink. So you can do that too if you want. I have a cocktail strainer. Actually, I think this is just a tiny little sieve, but it's about the same size as my proper cocktail strainer. Okay, this isn't, maybe I should have used the other end. Hey, no time like the present. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit more about Mr. Boston's guide because I think it's a really interesting history. But this cocktail the 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 um, gin gimlet actually goes back at least a hundred years to the 19th century late 1800s or probably even earlier um and let's see okay that's probably pummeled or muddled enough okay so we're going to do that and then we're going to put two ounces of gin in we're going to add the flask because we don't want to water down our drink uh and a typical sour i mean this this Essentially, this recipe is like the basis for lots of different recipes, including uh, a sidecar, a daiquiri, um, even the margarita, because it's it's so simple. It's usually like two ounces of your spirit or two parts of the spirit, one part of the sugar, the sweetener, and then one part of the citrus. Easy enough to remember for the novice like uh, ourselves, but you know, nonetheless, we are enthusiasts about what we do here. Okay. Let's see who's there. Hi, Jim. How are you? Happy day, Labor. Happy Labor Day weekend to you too. I hope you're not laboring too hard. 
where was I? Okay, we did the two ounces of the gin, I believe, already. Yeah, we did. And then I'm going to use that same measuring cup, because that was a good one, um, and put three quarters of an ounce of lime juice into this recipe. Where is it? Okay, I'm just going to have to, like, let's see. It doesn't have three quarters of an ounce measured on this. My mom warned me not to get citrus juice on her countertop, so I'm being very careful. We're not working on a like a meat cutting bully. Okay, I think we have everything in there. I have the ice. Store bought is fine, but if you have it from your own refrigerator freezer, that's great. But again, I didn't want to put it in first because I don't want this drink to be watered down. Mm. And I think with this drink, it's a, like a floral gin is going to be better than something like super juniper forward. So you know, you could use an older gin. You could use something like Hendrix, which is actually not that old, but it's it's great. My dad actually had some of that, but we had a little outing at the liquor store yesterday and I forgot to get some simple syrup. This is a really cool flip top shaker. This is going to be cool because it has a strainer on one side, but again, I'm going to double strain it into the, the family heirloom, if you will. But um, let's see, we're going to garnish just with a cucumber wheel, or like I said, you could do a ribbon that you just use, like, obviously a great peel with. This is a great shaker. Damn. My hands aren't getting cold at all. It's a miracle. Okay. And then we'll talk about the old Mr. Boston's guide. The bartender's guide. First printing, like I said, in 1935. A couple of guys. Ooh, see? And I just flipped the top it into the heirloom. Um, because I don't want any of the... Oh, this is cool. It's a nice cloudy, ever so slightly green color. This is going to be the perfect glass for it, too. Pumped about this. Okay. Doesn't want to come out. I mean, it's probably the cucumber. Oh, this is going to be a nice full drink. Perfect. What do we have? We have like close to four ounces of liquid in there. If my math is even remotely close, which, you know, it, it's give and take, half done. Okay, and then I'm just going to garnish with a simple little sliver of Mons cucumber. I'm going to cut a little slice in the side so we can hang it on the edge and give it a try. Um, yummy. Yummy. It looks pretty. Oops. It's very full. Like I said, look at that. That looks good. Nice, refreshing drink, too. Mm -hmm. Yes. I don't understand anymore why people say they don't like gin. When's the last time you had it? I don't know if this is a... I have a gift, by the way, of finding bugs in things. So I'm like, what is that? I can't see it very clearly. I don't know. Protein, I guess. A, a worst case scenario. But anyway, yeah, this is, uh, this is a keeper. Mm -mm -mm. I mean, the difference between this and a daiquiri would be gin versus um, rum, right? So again... Nice and refreshing. And you can, you know, do other riffs, like herbal riffs on it. This gives it a little bit of a herbal feel. Seriously, what is that? <laughs> Might have been a bug. Little nap. Um, but you could add some basil, too, like we did to uh, the cocktail last week and stuff. It's just so good. It's delicious. I'm going to make people try it. Well, I won't do that. But my parents are into, into it, I think. Um, but the old Mr. Boston's guy. Show and tell. I'm very excited. My dad's giving me this book. Uh, again, first printed in 1935. A couple of gents in the late 20s, about 1927, uh, founded a company that sold malt syrups uh, and bottling supplies that came in handy once prohibition set in uh, because people were bottling their own spirits that they made in their bathtub or, or beer. They were brewing their own beer too. And um, because of prohibition, like the art and the uh, avocation or your vocation of being a bartender went away. So after that, in like 1933, they purchased a distillery. And then it occurred to them in about 1935 that, again, people didn't know what they were doing to make drinks. So they came out with this book that also promoted their own spirits. The company is still alive and well today. Uh, and they do still bottle some old Mr. Boston spirits and cordials and things like that. Um, 
but the Sazerac company out of New Orleans actually purchased them. Let's say hi. Oh, yeah, Vivi. My friend Vivian Pooh. Yeah, Vivi. French gin. This is a good one. Citadel. Check it out. Um, and I think you'd like this cocktail. It's really refreshing. Um, and uh, so they, they published this book. They were publishing it every year, at least once a year, for many, many years. I don't know if it's still in, uh, in publication, but I have a little gem here on my hands because this version was printed at least in 1965. That's the last. Remember in grade school when they would teach you like to see in the, uh, the notes when it was printed and how many times it was printed? And yeah, the last, the 29th printing was January of 1965. And my dad had this probably shortly after they were married. So there you go. And um, the thing I love about this cocktail, again, it was a 19th century cocktail made in the 1800s. But how did it come about? Like who's really responsible for it? Well, we don't know exactly because it's very old. It's over 100 years old. And I must have another sip. But we kind of owe even cocktails really uh, a big thanks to British sailors and sailors near and far because they were set to sea with uh, lime juice to prevent scurvy. Nobody wants scurvy. Does that even exist anymore? It probably does. But um, citrus was the way that they would ward that off. And of course, they were given rations of a different spirit. If you've seen Navy strength gin even uh, or rum, it's much stronger than what you were, <laughs> we're, we're usually drinking off the shelves. Mm. but it was used uh, medicinally, you know, the, the, the citrus and the gin. And um, they often mix the juice of the limes with a little bit of a low spirit or any kind of spirit um, because that preserved it for their long journeys near and far or probably far. Um, and then some guy came along. His name was Lachlan Rose. And he figured out that you could preserve the juice by mixing it with sugar. And, you know, it, it appealed to people that were turning their noses up at liquor at any point in history. I mean, the British didn't worry about prohibition. That was just an American thing. Um, but uh, and he eventually developed his roses uh, cordials that they originally, we believe, made the um, all, all sorts of different cocktails, including the gimlet. Um, just by mixing 50% gin and 50% of the lime cordial that you can get still today at the, at the grocery store. Um, but who is the first one to actually create the cocktail? It could have been, again, history is muddled, but it could have been Rear Admiral Sir Thomas Desmond Gimlet. Makes sense, right? A British naval doctor who probably prescribed plenty of these for medicinal purposes only. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. So again, you guys, such a great drink. It's a go-to drink. I mean, it really became like the most popular it had ever been during the 1940s and the 50s as a 50-50 mix of the cordial that you can still buy, the roses, cordial, and gin. Um, but then when whiskey sours kind of came into play, people went back to using fresh ingredients. So you could do it either way. Have yourself a little taste test. All you need is two ounces of, I recommend and prefer a nice floral gin. Just Google and you can find some. You can find this right now absolutely in your stores. I think, who is it? Is it Brad Pitt? I think is going to start doing a French gin too. He's on board. Um, two ounces of gin. You need half ounce of simple syrup, half ounce of fresh squeezed uh, lime juice. And then you just want, or I'm sorry, half ounce of simple syrup. I went with three quarters of an ounce of lime juice. You put all of that and your cucumbers, if you want, into a uh, little muddler. You muddle it up a little bit, and then you just put some ice in there, shake her up, and have yourself a fine, fine historical cocktail. Yes. Oh, you know this cocktail? This gin, Citadel? Yes. Aw. And thank you so much, Lucy. Thanks for checking us out here, guys. I don't know. Who's... Hi, D. Karik. Hi. Hi, hi. You guys appreciate you so much. Um, try this cocktail. I think you're going to like it, especially as we wind down summer here. Cheers mm -hmm. to you and yours. Yes. Uh, I thank you so much, Johnny, for tuning in and cheers to you and yours. I hope that there is some progress made on the uh, front lines of the writers and the actors strike because it's already gone on too long. And uh, I remember hearing about a, a case about a week or so ago. Um, 
that a judge said that art cannot be um, artificial. What was it? It was something about like art cannot be copyrighted or if it's artificially created. So that was good, I think, for the actors and writers. And of course, DJs and people like me who create content and don't want somebody to rip us off. So cheers to you and yours. Thank you guys for tuning in. If you want to make this at home yourself, I will post the recipe properly shortly hereafter, as you know, in the comments and a picture of my very fine cocktail. See you guys next week, okay, when I'm back home in Southern California. Appreciate you watching, and I'll talk to you then. Cheers.